as they pulled the screen, I, I want to just say something for Phenotype February 1 and Negat Uh We have 160 people on the call yesterday, and I think they were about one similar, 150 something on the call last Tuesday. We kicked off Phenotype February and we had an orientation call that Anna will talk about. We had 50 people. So third, the community is engaged in Phenotype, you know, or at least start trying to get engaged in Phenotype February, which is, I think is amazing and 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 very hard, like very, very, very joyful for, for any of us who work on Phenotype. So thank you. Okay, Anna. Well, as as I said, uh, we're, one of the things we're proud of is participation and we hope that uh, you will also join at that this call and this update will help you to um, understand where you can benefit from the Finita February and also where you can benefit where Finita February can benefit from you. So it's six days uh, in February already and the work is very active. As a reminder, we're having four conditions that we will look at in the month of February, and we start week one with Alzheimer disease, um, continuing with non-small cell and small cell lung cancer for week two, depression for week three, and pulmonary arterial hypertension for week four. And in this first week, we're really using this time to help the community um, learn more about phenotyping, current best practices, tools, and approaches. And of course, we're also achieving our goal of um, quantifying the discrepancies and similarities in how um, a broader community develops reports and validates their phenotypes. And we're using Alzheimer's disease for week one. So what we did uh, to prepare for this week is to do the literature review and we had an orientation call on Monday. Um, this is what, as I was referring to, uh, which was attended by 50 people, where we looked at the uh, at how we would do literature review for all of the conditions, um, as well as how we will do um, data extraction. So this call was recorded, and if you want to join uh, now, there is information, more information for you in that recorded call that describes more specifically the steps, the files that you would uh, find in Teams, how to go about them, and so on and so forth. Right now we're um, at the Tuesday where we're having this update, and also after this call uh, later in the day, we will look at the phenotypes that we uh, took from the literature and replicate it in Atlas to see, um, you know, what to, to basically analyze what we've done so far, to look at the cohorts, to look at the discrepancies and similarities. So we welcome you to join that call as well, especially if you want to learn more about phenotyping or you want to contribute. Then as we look uh, forward in the week, uh, we will be taking this cohort that we replicated and we will look at the patient characteristics. So this is where we would run cohort diagnostics in Evaluator, and we'll also teach you how to do that if you want to do that on your data. And then Friday, um, of course, we have to uh, spend some time with people who want to learn Atlas and how to do phenotype in an Atlas. So this is where we will be having um, a demo on Atlas and review of the cohort diagnostics results. So as you can see, lots of calls, lots of learning opportunities, lots of opportunities to engage and to contribute. And um, today we will talk more about what we've learned so far, and we will start with what we've done for the literature search. So we have the standardized query um, available to everybody who participates. And uh, using that query, we retrieved 200 papers for Alzheimer's disease, and it was way too many uh, to do it on, on such a short notice. So we further filtered them uh, and scanned for the papers that have mentions of the phenotypes. And at the end, we identified 20 papers that um, had some sort of descriptions of the phenotypes, at least codes. We also and, limited to the last four years, so that's how we went to 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Um, and uh, we saved uh, the results 
um, of the search those 20 papers in our team's channel and then proceeded with a more in-depth analysis of what uh, those space papers reported. So we did the um, extraction of the information from those papers, um, specifically focusing on how people, um, how researchers reported uh, those phenotypes and also extracting the actual pieces of information that will be needed to replicate uh, the phenotypes. And we already, it's Tuesday, but we already replicated 13 of them as cohort definitions in Atlas. And of course, as you would imagine, not all of the papers could even be replicated, uh, which definitely will go into our findings on how reproducible the current research is. And after we replicated, um, uh, extracted the information and replicated the cohorts, there are three um, aspects that we want to um, highlight in this update, the things that we examined. First, uh, as we were doing uh, data extraction and summarization, we looked at variations in terminology that both refers to the words that people used to describe the disease, but also to the codes that they used uh, to code uh, their definitions, which is number two variation in the use of diagnostic codes. And the third element was to look at how people, or researchers, organize the, their codes in the cohort definition using their inclusion and exclusion criteria. So in this presentation, you will see us touching on each of these points one by one. And this is, I think, where Gotham wants to talk about what we learned about terminology. Thank you. And I was just happy to, uh, typing back to Craig. Um, so as one of the one of the first practices that we do is to develop a shared understanding of what the clinical idea is. And in this particular case, it is Alzheimer's disease. And Anna and Alza, they were all looking at the literature that was that was that came from the literature search, and they found this term, Alzheimer's disease related dementia. And, and that terminology was getting used more and more in more recent publications. And as I asked me, what is this Alzheimer's related, Alzheimer's disease related dementia? And like any clinician would do, I went to the up to date and I looked up and I searched for Alzheimer's disease related dementia and I didn't get anything. I just said, well, I think it's just, a, it's just a term that somebody must have created to, to, to talk about this a broader idea. And then Patrick corrected me. No, look at the National Institute of Aging's website. They have this terminology. This is a standard terminology. And that led to an aha idea. Okay, what is ADRD? And I looked it up. It is an umbrella term. It is an umbrella term that, that not only talks about Alzheimer's disease, which is about 85% of all dementias, but also the other types of related dementias like vascular dementia, Lewy body disease, frontotemporal dementia. And there's a reason why this was done. I looked back and went back in history. And this starts from around time, around 2010, 2011, when a, when, a, when a law was passed in the US that promoted research in Alzheimer's disease and that the National, National Alzheimer's Project Act uh, passed by Congress in 2011, that introduced a more inclusive term that's, that, that encompassed the spectrum of dementia related disorders. And what, what we found was there's an increasing use of these terminologies among in health research community, in health policy community. But what is interesting is if you look at clinical textbooks, that's not as common because there is, there is a level of specificities that physicians crave for when they diagnose dementia. So they do go back and say, this is Alzheimer's disease, this is Lewy body disease, and this is vascular dementia, and do not use the term as Alzheimer's disease related dementia. So next slide. So we went back and we tried to study what these clinical ideas are and we, we tried to differentiate between them. And what's important is, although they have similar presentations, even if you get the diagnosis wrong, it does not change much because people have an underlying pathology and they need medical attention. And most of the, the care that is available right now is symptom management. So the, it's, it's very similar from a first patient's experience perspective. So grouping this and being inclusive may, made a lot of sense. Um, next slide. But in our literature search, uh, what we found is there was still variation in how this this broad idea ADRD was being defined. Most literature did not talk about what ADRD is. What are the individual components that were part of their grouping? 
obviously older studies focused only on AD, but with the with the focus on ADID as introduced by the US Congress and health policy, there's more, more publications on ADID. There was also some interesting findings. Some people, some, some, some scientists used new terminologies. When they used the term AD, they, they did not seem to be referring to Alzheimer's disease anymore. They were referring to Alzheimer's dementia, which is a new terminology, and that introduces ambiguity for us. And so these were some of the insights that we found just by developing a shared understanding of the clinical idea. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so um, so that was our first finding, which I thought that uh, when we first started this, we said Alzheimer disease, and we specifically said we're not interested in dementia. We're specific to Alzheimer disease, but then I found what we found is that the literature is actually not specific, and sometimes, and now we have ADRD, which actually include dementia. So for people who are doing Alzheimer disease. Um, uh, research, one of the things that you first need to identify is are you, uh, are you is your target Alzheimer disease uh, not including dementia or your more in, or your search should or your research actually uh, include patients uh, of related dementia and then you need to go through that exercise of defining what that is before you go to the literature to see what algorithm exists for these terms because it will be different. Okay, so uh, putting aside the, the, the noise that comes from AD and ADRD, uh, looking at what exists in terms of phenotype definition in those studies, uh, um, AD or ADRD is a, is a very interesting interested field, but we actually we have a lot of phenotype algorithm proposed and validated in the literature. I'm showing here you two examples of two papers coming one from the from Europe, particularly Spain, uh, where we where they looked at three different definitions of Alzheimer disease. And in that case, they focus on Alzheimer disease only. And they pulled three definitions that are popular and used in literature, and they did their validation uh, for those three. Uh, parallel to that, in the US, there is another uh, paper that looked at the validation of uh, claims algorithm to identify ADRD in this case. Uh, and similarly, they went into the exercise of finding uh, popular algorithms and then doing the validation work uh, to report how uh, these definitions work. And uh, in the second case, in observational data in the US, particularly in Medicare, in the first case, in observational data in uh, Spain, particularly uh, CDF, which both of these data sources are actually uh, exist in, the, in our network are, and ETL to OMAP. So very informative for us. Next slide. So I'm going to first focus on the first side, uh, first study, and and, and show you uh, what they have, what what they did. So they uh, evaluated or validated three different definition of Alzheimer. In this case, the first two definition have the same codes. They they are different in the um, logic. In the first, just require a diagnosis of uh, Alzheimer uh, using ICD-10, F00, and G30. Uh, in the second paper, in the second algorithm, they looked into a diagnosis or treatment. Uh, so both uh, both uh, observation would qualify a person to be to be classified as Alzheimer, and they specified those anti-dementia drug and giving the ATC codes for those drugs. The third algorithm is a little bit more um, um, complex or a little bit less less straightforward, where they. Uh, uh, defined algorithm, uh, defined Alzheimer with the diagnosis of Alzheimer, or it treated uh, people treated with Al for Alzheimer with the same ATC groups. However, those people cannot have other def uh, conditions, including specific types of dementia or Parkinsonism or strokes and so forth. Uh, so those how these the algorithms valid and they validated those. Now. One of the interesting things observed in the literature is that A3, that third algorithm, they refer to uh, a paper published by Imfield in 2013 that uh, that they said they they that algorithm is based on that paper. However, if when you dig deeper and go into that paper, you will actually find two papers of Imfield. Neither of them, both are variation, and neither of them is exact replication of what they have in this paper. So, um, so it's. It's driven by it, by it, but it's not exactly what Infield has proposed. So we have we added Infield as another um, algorithm that we also added to our replication. Next slide. So that is in Europe. 
In the US, this paper covered three different algorithms for Alzheimer. Uh, and in that case, they're, they're specifying ADRD as the interest. So they include other, uh, other types of dementia. Uh, they focus on CCW, and then they reference that as their kind of basic definition. They also reference that CCW and they have their implementation. Similarly, though, to the European situation, if you go back to CCW, you'll also find two different publications describing the CCW definition. Neither of them are exact, and neither of them is exact to what they replicate here in the paper. Specifically in this case, the transition from ICD-10 to from ICD-9 to ICD-10. They propose uh, uh, some uh, modification of the CCW, two different modifications leading to two new algorithms, BNUM-EM and BNUM standard. So we replicated those. We also replicated the original CCW with the two different variation of its implementation. Um, just a high note, the, the way those uh, algorithm different, the, the modification they added for BNUM over CCW is that they uh, changed the requirement of the observation time and they added extra clinical ideas under what is covered as related dementia. And the idea here was to try to include more people or to improve the sensitivity. Next slide. So this is I, so this is some I, to give you some idea of the algorithm that we covered. As Anna mentioned, we ended up with 13 different definitions. And you can see them here on the slide. This is our documentation of the 13 with referencing the original papers and what validation uh, validation metrics that they were reported. So uh, overall, those 13 varies in the algorithm. Some require one diagnosis, as you saw. Some requires two. Some requires three. Some requires one inpatient and one outpatient. Some require a neurologist visit, and some required one treatment. Some require two treatment, and then there's whole different combinations of those. Um, and also the codes varies, particularly when it comes to DRD. What goes under a DRD is not consistent. Sometimes they include vascular dementia. Sometimes they do not include vascular dementia. And because of the inclusion or the idea of a DRD, some of them actually uh, covered, like did a subgroup that they called Alzheimer disease, which goes under a DRD. But then for that, they also varied on how they uh, specified Alzheimer. Sometimes they, it, it only means Alzheimer disease. Sometimes it means Alzheimer disease uh, plus unspecified dementia. So it's an exclusion of the dementia, not including all other things that goes under ADRD. So very inconsistent, really up to the paper. And the, the hardest part is that they don't actually specify that. And that's something you need to learn as you read the paper. And nobody talk about the shift between AD and ADRD and why it happened. Next slide. I'll, uh, as I'll just, yeah. I'll just jump in and, and, and share one of the anecdotes that I particularly appreciated. Uh, in the same exact journal, the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, there were two papers published within one year of each other, both using U.S. claims data, specifically with the stated outcome of Alzheimer's disease, using different algorithms entirely to find the cases. And so uh, it was just striking for me because I think as a community, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about how we're going to standardize things. And it's really tricky to think about how would how do we reach consensus standards of uh, coming up with algorithms that we can validate and reuse because no single no single individual or institution has kind of the authority to create something that other people use. And I would have thought the editor in chief reviewing journal articles in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease might have a have a an opinion about Alzheimer's disease, but nonetheless, we see you know two successive papers, same data, different algorithms, finding different things, and I think that that points to the you know kind of community wide challenge that we're facing and why we're seeing so much what I'm going to term researcher induced variance, and I think the big opportunity we have as an Odyssey community is to figure out how do we reduce the harm that we're causing ourselves in the research that we're doing by trying to reach some consensus standards that we can all agree to. So to summarize, what we found is that shift and confusion between ADRD, AD and AR, ADRD, it is a field that we actually have a lot of proposed, uh, proposed algorithms with validation metrics. So it's a rich field compared to some other uh, conditions. 
there is a lot big body of literature coming specifically from Medicare. So it's a place where observational or uh, or claims data has been used um, const for for many studies to try to figure out who has Alzheimer's and who doesn't. Uh, we replicated 13, talked about the um, uh, the variation in the logic. And just to give you an idea in the variation of the codes used when you shift from AD uh, to ADRD, ADRD definition sometimes includes codes like senile de degeneration of brain, not elsewhere classified. So it, it can be really broad um, compared to Alzheimer when some of these studies really limited to one specific diagnosis code of Alzheimer disease. The, if, if, you, if, if you're curious about the validation uh, metrics they found, so it's really it really varied, but it seems like PPV for Alzheimer uh, codes goes from 50% to 95% across those studies, while sensitivity goes from 30 to 85. And whenever you play with those logic to kind of require more things to improve the PPV, you will have a hit in sensitivity as we all um, um, expect. Uh, but those were the ranges, and definitely in our summary, we will dig deeper into the validation methods. Okay, I'm going to turn it to Jamie to talk about our next steps for Alzheimer's and the rest of the month. Um, thank you all for this for this whirlwind going through Alzheimer's. Um, what we've done so far over on our side, using data internal to our organization J and J, is we've um, Built these built cohorts for five of the algorithms that AZA has covered over the last little while using cohort diagnostics and calculating their background incidence rates stratified by age and sex and age by sex. And the idea is that by looking at the, the output of these different tools, we'll be able to cross compare across the different algorithms to see what their actual um, what the actual differences are when they're implemented. So I've built a pretty lightweight study package that will run cohort diagnostics and cohort incidents to produce this um, these sets of outputs. And for any data holder that is interested in running these Alzheimer's uh, cohort diagnostics and other other analytics on their own data, I'm going to share probably later today or early tomorrow latest a study package that you could use on your data internally to produce this same set of outputs. And it'll include some information on how to share those results over um, the Odyssey SFTP um, approach. So keep your eyes out for the next um, in the next day or two on the Odyssey forms for um, some commentary on how to access this study package and some documentation on how you can participate yourself. And um, feel free to if you're when you're running this analysis, if you'd like any any assistance or so just to work together in doing it, feel free to um, contact me. Just text me over Microsoft Teams or send me an email. This this info will all be on the forum post. Yep, and then uh, that on on Friday we will on the community call we will be talking about our findings from cohort diagnostics for the thirteen definitions, um, and also we'll try to run fee evaluate it and see how they perform in our internal data sources. On Friday as well, the first half of the meeting will be an uh, a demo of taking one of these definitions and replicating them in Atlas, particularly to train people or or share with people how you do things in Atlas. So if you're interested in just learning a little bit of Atlas, whether interested in Alzheimer's or not, that's your time to join. Uh, we're also going to be looking at cohort diagnostics results for those 13 definition and understand how these variation actually ended up affecting the composition of patients we identify and also the incidence rate of the events uh, across the data sources. OK. Um, that's for Alzheimer next week, or actually this week, we are going to uh, kick the uh, lung cancer phenotypes definitions. And our first step going to be kicking the literature review, which hopefully going to happen on Thursday at the beginning of the week for lung cancer. And those who want to work with lung cancer, I know there's a lot of interest there. Um, the, the next post is going to come the next two days, which will give you all those papers that we identified from the first step. So you can start the literature uh, abstraction process. Thank you.